Hello, I am Jordan Deckert, and these are the different components of my cultural identity. Here, I have broken down nine aspects of my cultural identity and the weight they have upon who I am. As you can see, my gender is the largest influence of my cultural identity, and my ethnicity and religion are the smallest. My social class and my language are my second largest, followed by my sexual orientation, my opinion on exceptionality, my age, and my geographic location. First, I will talk about my largest influence on my culture identity, my gender. I am a girly girl at heart. I love doing my nails, my hair, and my makeup. I enjoy all aspects of femininity. However, I also feel very strongly about equal rights. This is a picture of a current U.S. Supreme Court case fighting for women to have the right to be topless as men are. I am very passionate about this because I think it is outrageous that men can mow their lawn topless but women can't. Women get hot too. This is just a small example of how I feel about feminism, and feminism as a whole greatly impacts my life and how I view myself in society. Next, I will talk about my social class. This is a picture of my mother, sister, and I in Mexico on a family vacation. I couldn't tell you if this was my sixth or seventh vacation in Mexico, but my dad works hard to take us somewhere extravagant every year. This picture is an example of my social class because that lavish vacation is just a small example of the easy lifestyle I've grown up with. Becoming accustomed to this lifestyle has driven me to continue it for my children, and so my social class has become a large portion of who I am and who I want to be. My social class relates to my cultural identity because recognizing the social class that I've come from will determine what social class that I want to end up in, and those goals affect every aspect of my life in getting to those goals. Next, I will discuss the language slice of my pie. Growing up in a privileged country such as America, I have become aware of the privilege it is to speak English. I believe there is a worldwide view that to be successful you must speak English, and I very so recognize that I am privileged to speak it. My next slice of my cultural pie is my sexual orientation. Being a straight female is also a privilege I have because I understand life as an LGBTQ is not so easy. This is a picture of my fiance, Avram, who is the single most significant person in my life. Every decision I make is for our future, and so my sexual orientation greatly impacts my life every day. My sexual orientation relates to my cultural identity because who I am and who I associate with makes up who I am. So growing up being a straight female has greatly impacted the people that I've surrounded myself with and the person that I've become. Next, my slices of exceptionality, age, and geographic location are equal impacts on my cultural identity. Finding exceptionality in myself came in the form of college. When I found out at the ripe age of 23 that I needed college to succeed, I thought I was too old and had been out of school too long. Interestingly, I found through college an intrinsic motivation to succeed that I never knew I had. Now, at age 25, graduating at age 26, I feel like Superwoman. Part of that college experience stemmed from my love of all things Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania is an acquired taste. Here is a picture that I took from my car in the middle of May. Although I do not like the crazy weather, growing up with all four seasons has impacted my appreciation for each season, as well as helped to shape me into a flexible person. Finally, my two smallest categories, my ethnicity and my religion. I was born and raised in Littlestown, Pennsylvania, so although I have strong Irish roots, all I see when I look in the mirror is a small town girl from Pennsylvania, so my ethnicity has very little impact on me. Finally, my religion, I believe I will wake up tomorrow morning, and that is the extent of my faith. Thank you for listening.